<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It is So Together Tuesday. We are back. It has been a month and a little bit since we have been here. Um, so we had a nice little break. We're back. We're excited to see you all here. So thank you. Um, for those of you who are like, we're so excited you're coming back. We really appreciate it because we're always excited to come back too. And it's nice to know that somebody else wants us here. So thank you. I appreciate it a lot. We ended the season last time in June and we took a little bit of time off and it was great. So we always talk about this, that we took, we're going to take some time off. And it's funny because when we've done this before, people think that we're just like taking it all off and we're not, but we did actually finally get a vacation. So normally we just take it off from the show, but this time we actually got a vacation um, and we got to spend some time driving around the area because surprisingly, we actually still really like traveling around. After last year, we visited 46 states. And I think 16 months total, we visited all of those states. It was crazy sauce. And then we got we got settled here in Kansas City and then decided we'd been here long enough. So we hit the road again. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we had to take a little road trip. We wanted to um, share it with you just a little bit because you guys are kind of our buddies. And well, before we show them the video, hang on, oh. hang on. Before we show them the video, can we talk about um, sharing to win? Oh, okay. Let's talk about sharing to win. So share the video. And um, if you share the video with your favorite sewing groups, your sewing friends, all that sort of stuff, we will enter you to win. And at the end of the show today, we will choose two winners. So there'll be one from YouTube and one from Facebook. So no matter where you're at, you can share the video. Um, you might just have to share the link if you're from YouTube to share it. Let us know that you shared. We'll pick a winner. Okay. And then you will win the... Um, project that we're doing today. So you'll win the book, the panel for the book and the complimentary fabric coordinated fabric. So right. that'll be the exciting thing. And as well, you will win the little sew together Tuesday tote bag and the mug. So you will be one of the in crowd there <laughs> with that stuff. So that uh, was, that was uh, tchotchkes that we were able to give away when we were uh, yeah visiting all the quilt shops. And now that we're not visiting quilt shops, we just give it to our special viewers. So um, enter to win by sharing the video and then we'll choose two winners at the end okay was that right yeah that what that'd you be wanted? great that's all great right. now now let's now share the let's vacation, vacation pictures. pictures okay so we're just gonna go through them real quick all right <laughs> <laughs> so Jeremy, you can go ahead so we hit the road this is us in our adventure hats we wear them every time we travel somewhere and we went to colorado which is absolutely beautiful and we visited Mesa Verde, which had been on my list for, oh, about 25 years and got to see this beauty, which if you have not, you have to. Um, it was amazing. We visited Four Corners down in uh, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Monument Valley, which was uh, kind of a, I don't know, it was a, bullet, a bucket list thing for Hawk that he really wanted to go to Monument Valley. We went to Gooseneck State Park near Mexican Hat. And I don't know what state that was. It's Arizona. Uh, where was that at? Arches. Arches National Park. We watched the sunset. <laughs> we got to try, uh, do some little hiking around. It was super fun. And then we uh, kind of ended the trip coming back through Kansas. And that's actually in the monuments. I can't remember. The monuments? I can't, Monument Kansas National Park in Kansas? No, it's not a national no. park. No, no, no it's, not. it's just right. Monument something. Um, Monument Rocks, I think, is what it is. And they are oh, crazy yeah. because they are in Kansas, which you expect to be totally flat. And then there's these limestone karst, basically, out in the middle of the cornfields. Um, very odd. So that was like the brief rundown of our trip. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about, it, Hawk? No, I think I think it's great. We, we're just happy to be back in the Jeep and, and getting out and seeing this yeah. beautiful country again. It was, so that it was, was great. really, Thanks really great. Thanks for coming great. along. Yeah. <laughs> and the brief, really quick thing. If you're interested in seeing more of our travels, we do have an Instagram that's Makers at Large. And if you follow either of us, you can see those. So we do love getting out and seeing the country. It was very fun to get out there again. We did end up stopping at one quilt shop along the way. I tried to make sure that it was just a vacation and just a way. And then on the way back, we stopped um, at Quilt Cabin. So it's called, right? Yep. Quilt Cabin in Colby, Kansas. Uh, we had stayed there on one of our trips before. When we had come through, we had stopped and done a class there. We actually did the poncho class there is what we did. Mm, I can't remember. Like about a year ago, maybe a little bit uh, less than a year ago. And we'd done the poncho class and she is still selling that pattern and doing that class. So that was kind of fun to see that that's still going strong. So if you're ever in Western Kansas, it's a great place to stop. So we did, and then we came back home and yeah, now we got all prepped up and we're ready for a whole new season. So the season starts obviously today, it will run through December and we've got 
almost all of the projects figured out, which we're really excited about. We're going to be working with stores a little bit more this season to um, to get to find out where they have the kits because we realized that was an issue last season of not knowing where to get the fabric necessarily. So we've worked with a couple. We've let the stores know that we want to work with them. And so we've got a couple of them who have let us know that they've got the panel and stuff. So we'll talk about that later. But we're excited for a new season and making a few little changes. So we'll be working with the stores a little bit more again. And also the other change that we're going to be doing is we are using a new thread. So we are using a new thread from Mettler. So I love Mettler Metrocene. But at Quilt Market last year, they introduced me to a new thread that they have called Cycle. that is actually a recycled thread. So it is 100% post-consumer content. Is that what they say? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a really great thread. It's all recycled. The little, um, the spool is actually recycled thread. This guy right here. I can come back over here. I'll show you guys. Um, so this is. And so I am giving it a try. I've done a bunch of sample sewing with it so far and everything has been great. So we're going to test it out and let you guys know what we think about it. So that will be the other new thing that we're doing this season. We are still doing show notes. So make sure that you go download them from the blog and you'll have a little handout for today's show that'll give you some extra information and a nice place to keep your notes if you want to take some as you go. Um, and that can be found at shannonfabrics.com slash blog and you'll be able to find our blog. And if you look for the one for B is for Bear, you'll find the show notes. And that is true for all of the episodes last season as well. They all have show notes that include additional information that we talked about in the show to give you a reference to look back to when you come and do the project later because I know y'all aren't doing it with me at the same time even though I wish you were it'd be so much fun okay all right so I think that's all the you know bookkeeping that's stuff. bookkeeping let's, okay let's all right show. so let's talk about the show what we're doing today so I'm gonna put my little show notes over here the show today what we're doing is this B is for bear um so we have done a couple of other books and we'll talk about those later but these little soft books I think that honestly like cuddle soft books are the softest soft books um, because the fabric is amazing for it. So a little soft book, they're great for children and uh, little infants, toddlers love them. They just have all these different little animals in it. So this one is the ABC, B is for bear, but then it has, you know, A is for alpaca, has all of the different animals in here, really cute little guys. And I love, I love these little characters. I think this, the illustrations here are just really cute. Okay, and they actually found a, a bird that starts with an X, so that's pretty exciting. Don't ask me to pronounce it, because I can't. We're going to go with Xantus. Xantus, maybe, yeah. And a unicorn, which I really like. <laughs> We're just going to legitimize <laughs> the unicorn. I think there was and, a song about that in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what we're doing today. This is a very cute little project. Like I said, we've had some other ones. And um, I'll show you those. But the way that these come, you can get it in a panel. And the panel is a one-yard cut. Let's see if I can show you guys this whole thing. Okay. So it comes pre-printed with all of the books or all of the book pages printed out. And you just cut along the lines and sew it together. It's actually super duper easy this way. So you just buy one little panel of it. And it also, it also has the instructions. It also has the instructions on it. So because it, you know, is its own thing. To, so it tells you all the measurements that you need and the seam allowance and all of that good stuff. So it's basically all inclusive. The other thing, let me show you really quick, is that it comes with the handle here. So we pre-printed a little handle strip. Sorry. Pre-printed a little handle strip that you will also cut out to make the handle. Okay. So that's all important um, information to keep track of. This one is very, um, it's a very like morphable project. So you can kind of do a lot of different things with it. We're going to start by cutting some stuff out and we're going to work through um, a few of the pages and then we'll talk about the whole process of putting the thing together. But let's cut something out, some things out first. Oh, I wanted to show you this and then I'll move it off the table too. So I also made a cute coordinating blanket. Because this is some really cute little fabric. Because we sell this fabric by the yard also. And it's not the panel, right? It is not the panel. It is the same fabric. Print, it is the same print. But, but it is kind of like. The scale is a little different. Mm -hmm, the scale is different. It's got all the letters on here. One of the things that I really do like about this um, print is that the letters aren't in ABC order. 
So it makes it actually so you can use this blanket in any size and you're not um, cutting off the alphabet or messing things up. And I don't know. I like the fact that it's it's not tossed, but it's mixed up. So I really do. Yeah, I appreciate that. We can talk about that more later. Uh, okay, so let's get this cut out. So one of the things that they do when they print this, see if you can come on in here and see this really close, is that you can see the lines here. This is what we're going to cut on. Okay, so the seam allowance is included in this. So a lot of times people aren't sure if they should sew on the line or they should cut on the line. I'm going to tell you, cut on the line. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut this out. You can absolutely use a ruler or just follow the line. Depends on how comfortable you feel with the rotary cutter. So this is a digital print. And so mm -hmm. that means that the nap on this is 2.5 millimeters. It's yep. just a little shorter than the normal, normal cuddle. And it cuts really nicely. With yeah, the super cutter. easily with the rotor cut. And this is like the only time. Look, we have the little black screen of death capping again. That's nice. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. There's that. And I'll cut this other one. Whoops. Cut it all the way up. And then I can turn this around. Okay, because it's cuddle, you're going to have a little bit of a mess. Each one of these pages is going to be a little mess. And you'll just clean it up. Okay, go ahead. Just cut along the line. Okay. Everybody's super excited about the fact that you're not using a ruler. <laughs> so <laughs> on, the, um, on the pattern, it tells you the actual size that you should... You are brave. It's true. Um, <laughs> um, so it tells you the actual size that you should cut the page. And I don't actually care about that. So I just cut it along the lines and then I make the match. And it has worked out totally fine for me. I just trust the fact that they probably measured that out when they printed it. And it has worked for me. So don't get too neurotic about the actual measurements that are there. Um, we don't really care too much. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this other one. So this is, so it tells you here. So this is something to keep track of. This one, it will matter, but you can, you can tell because it's the ABCs. You can follow them. But it tells you which page is which. So this is page one, the inside front cover. This one is page 10, the inside of the back cover. So this is the other side of the cover. Here is this one where it tells me this was the front cover and the back cover. So I know the covers are going to go together. All right. All the other ones are listed the same way. Okay, so it's going to tell you, so this will be page two in it, and when you flip it around, that's page nine. Uh, we'll talk more about how to arrange them later, but do note that it tells you which page is which. And the, I guess the trick is, though, that you're cutting off those marks. You are cutting off those marks. <laughs> yes, but, you kind of have to keep track. But the biggest thing, right, but you can keep track because it's the alphabet, and we probably should all know it by now. Okay, so, that's, that's fair. <laughs> so yeah. we, could, we can kind of figure it out, and you will want to double check. The biggest thing is making note of which one is the cover. The cover is going to be bigger. So the cover is just, I don't know, an inch bigger maybe than the rest of the book. Okay. And that's to create an actual cover for it. So the first thing I do is I'm going to cut out all of the pieces. We're just going to cut out these two and deal with this. And then I'm going to cut out the handle down there as well. Let me get that. Put my other one over there. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to come over here. And as long as you can see, as long as I have the piece that I'm cutting out flat, it doesn't really matter what's happening with the rest of this. I'm just going to go ahead and keep that part flat. And like I said, you are more than welcome to use a ruler. I just like to, you know, do it freestyle. See how straight I can actually get it. I might have some practice though. So, and it's also one of those that if it's a little wobbly, it's fine because in the end, it's all going to come together, sewn very nicely. Okay, and this one's kind of fun because it's printed um, with a design that matches the bear on the front. So pretty cute. It is pretty cute. It reminds mm -hmm. me of a cookie. 
It kind of does remind me. Of I don't a know. Like, oh, what was what were, what were the the what was the cookie cereal when we were growing oh, up? Oh, Cookie Crisp. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what that texture reminds me. I think me they of. have that stuff still. Okay, so I'm gonna put the covers to the side, and we're gonna do the handle first because it's important to do the handle, get it over with, put it to the side. So we're gonna do that first. There are a couple ways of tackling this. And um, I just tried one the other day that actually works pretty well. So I'm going to show you guys my big ruler here. So this piece should be about three and a half inches. It is. Let me get it to lay a little straighter. Okay. So it's about three and a half. I got a little wobbly, but it's all right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure this. And one of the things that you can do to get these to be straight is I'll bump it up against my ruler. Figure out where it's not quite as straight as I want it to be. Okay, but now I'm going to pop it over. And one and three quarters is half of three and a half, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's my one and three quarter, or yeah, one and three quarter mark. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mark the center of this with a pen. I don't know if this one's going to write. You see anything? I don't. Try a different one. There, I see that one. What there. is that? That was, is one of the friction fine liners, okay. which won't matter because this is going inside. So if that mark comes back, I won't ever see it. So it's all right. Okay. So let me put this away. So this is how I did it the other day. I'm going to tell you, this is my little cheater method. So originally, uh, we have you do it so that you fold it in and then fold it in and then clip it. We'll still do that, but I'm going to add a little bit of spray basting first. So like I said, a little, a little bit of a cheat. And mostly it just holds it a little flatter for me. What's that spray base that you love so much? Can this you show is, oh, we didn't hand? do the ingredients. <laughs> we should go back and do ingredients. <laughs> Throw those up for us. <laughs> there we go. There are ingredients. The Bee for the Bear panel. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. All the different options for putting inside, which is the pre-wash flannel, low loft polyester batting, a mid loft polyester batting. Um, you're going to want the polyester thread. Obviously, we talked about that. A 9014 stretch needle, a rotary cutter, like I was just using, a nine, or a 6x24 ruler, like I was just using, long flower head pins, basting spray, which is what I'm using now, the OD505, a felt tip pen, and a hump jumper or height compensation tool. We'll talk about all of those things. They're all kind of interesting. Right now, we're talking about the OD basting spray. So... <laughs> <laughs> so we use that. So those are the things you want. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take this and I'm going to fold it up almost to the line. And because it's got the basting spray, it's just going to stay there. So one of the things about Cuddle, if you've worked with it very much, you know, is it really kind of has a mind of its own sometimes. And because it's a knit fabric, it doesn't really take a fold the way cotton does. So cotton, I could use a pressing tool and I could really like, you know, get those edges to stay. So here's, here's the handle for a different one. If I try to get this to roll up, it's hard to get it perfect. So it doesn't want to roll and stay as flat. So this is what the basting spray does. It makes it stay nice and flat. This is totally doable. You would do it the same way. Okay. But it doesn't want <laughs> to stay, stay quite as nicely. Does you have to like just pin it or... So clip then you get to or... pin it and clip it. Okay. So like this, this is going to stay the way I want it to. And now I just flip it over and it's much easier to deal with. So it is kind of my little cheat that I tried the other day. And I was like, would that work? And it totally did. So now I'll get a couple of little clips. So these are just wonder clips from Clover, which I like an awful lot. And I'm going to fold these over. So this was my middle line that I folded it up to. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. We're gonna we're gonna go back to this for just a second. Yes. So this is Odif five oh five spray. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to find at most quilt shops. Most quilt shops have uh, it these days. The great thing about yeah. this is it does not smell at all. Right. So you can spray this in the house. I uh, I have a pretty sensitive nose. 
we spray it right here in the studio. You and don't, it's fine. You don't smell it it's at all. totally fine. Yeah, I will say that some of the basting sprays can be a little smelly. Um, and this one is not. It doesn't smell and it washes right out. So like I have a little cloth that I'll use to use for my background for the overspray that could just get thrown in the wash, wash, dried, reused, and it will not be sticky anymore. So I love it for that reason. Two yeah. things. It doesn't stick mm -hmm. to your needle. So it yeah. doesn't gum up your needle or your machine. Correct. And mm -hmm. because it does wash out, it's totally fine to use it for a kid's project. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So Great. we have used it for years and I really do love it. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this down. So I wonder if I have my, yeah, I do. So let's give this a try because I like this foot. So I'm using the baby lock chorus. Right. I say that on my sure. It goes it for the <laughs> I've been using my crescendo um, for the past few days doing sample sewing. So my brain is a little little scrambled for that. But this is the chorus. And uh, this is kind of like the, the crescendo grew up and got a new name. And so this one has the digital dual feed back here. You want to take us slowly which around to the back? I'm going to tell you, if you have watched Sew Together Tuesday for very long, I worked for the first couple of years on the crescendo and it has a larger digital dual feed back here and so it's um this is the compact is what they call this and so it's a little shorter this way and it's a little narrower this direction here so it's smaller in lots of ways and i will say that i sewing between the two machines this makes a big difference so if you have the crescendo and you can get the compact digital dual feed this is my you know validation of it that it is actually a worthy investment it sews definitely better with it's easier to sew it with um, compact okay so one of the things i like about this is that the feet are really easy to change okay let's see if we can nail that there we go so i got the new foot on this is my stitch in the ditch foot or an edge stitch foot so it has this little bar down the middle that helps me keep a straight line so i'm going to go ahead and i like to sew the part that is clipped together first and I'm just going to put this in there and bump it up to that little bar that's there let's put my foot down and now I need to move my needle over because my needle is sitting right on the middle which is the fold and I need it to actually sew it so I'm going to come over here I'm going to switch the length of my stitch to a three and a half and then I'm going to do a left right shift and I'm going to move it over until I think it's probably the right spot so I'm going to do one and a half and see how that works See if I put my needle down, seems to be all right. So now I just need to make sure that this stays right along the edge there, and then it will sew a nice straight line. So it makes it so that it's a little easier to get those nice top, top stitches. And I actually use this foot quite a lot in my sewing. And we're just gonna sew these two edges together. They stay pretty nicely because they're basted down. Okay. Then I'm going to get up here and I'm just going to kind of pivot so across the end and twist it again. Get it back in the right spot. There we go. Okay, and you can see the white in here. And this is because it's a digital print because the brown does not go all the way through the brown. It's a print on top. So that is just one of the, the things that happen. And go ahead and cut that. So now you can see it does a nice, a nice top stitch on either side. And it keeps it really nice and straight, which I appreciate. And that's a nice big stitch. Three, you said it. Three, three, and, half. three and a half. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now I've got my handle and I'm going to go ahead and cut that in half. So I do it the, the easy way. And I fold it in half. And then I chop it. There we go. All right. So I'm not sure what the uh, actual measurement is, there, but that is half. Half. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we need. All right. So now we're going to make the pages. And all of the pages are going to be made basically the same. And you can make them with different stuff inside. So my preference is the flannel. And that's what we're going to use to make this one today. But you can also use... Uh, this is the Pellon, or no, this is the Quilter's Dream Poly Request batting is what this one is. 
All right, so it's a nice, see if we can show how thin it is. It's a very nice thin matting, but it is a little bit thicker than this. And so let me see if I can grab, hold on just a second. I'm gonna come around the table the other direction and you can stay there. So this is, this one I did with uh, one layer of the batting. Okay, and you can kind of see how thick that is. I'm gonna put this one over. This one I did with two layers of the batting. Can you see a difference? Very minimal difference okay. on the edge. Okay, so this one actually has two layers of batting, so you can it. feel it. You can feel it more than you can see it from yeah. this angle. Okay, so this is this is quite a bit thicker than this one. But you can also do it with, I'm bringing my other samples really quick. This one has absolutely nothing. So it's super floppy and yeah, <laughs> different. This one has the two layers, does not fold up the same way. Do you okay? recommend putting the batting and stuff in the cover and each page or yes. just the cover? Every page, we're gonna do them okay. exactly the same. Uh, and this one was done with the flannel which is what I prefer. I like the feel of this. It's still got a little bit of drape, but it's got some body too. So um, you can use any of those. You can actually use SF-101. I'll come back around. You can keep showing this stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, around. we did. So um, you can use any of them that you like, but those are the reasons why I choose the different ones. So the, the poly batting works really nice. It makes it stiffer, but I don't like Um, I don't know what the word is, the thickness of it, I guess, it makes it a little bit heavier to sew. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the part of sewing these together. You could do something like this on the cover and then do nothing on the pages in between or do flannel on the pages in between. That is totally up to you. Um, but you are going to have to figure out what you want to do on which one. So you have one cover and two inside pages. We're going to do the cover. And um, we're going to do it with the flannel. I hope I have a big enough piece. Whew, I do. Okay. This is where I always mess up. So be careful. Don't do it like I do. All Wait, right. Like what? With the upside right side down? Because I want to put the right side down first. And I'm like, that's not what I'm doing. I'm putting this on the back. So I'm putting the flannel on the back of this um, page. All right. So that's what we want to do. We could go ahead and we could spray base this if we wanted to or not. Okay. Either way, it works. If you spray base it, you kind of have to pull them apart. And uh, I like the flexibility of this. So we're not actually going to spray base this, but you're welcome to. All right. So I am going to do one thing before I stitch every, or put everything together. And that is, oh, I'm going to trim it first. Get my, I do want to use my ruler for this just so I can keep it nice and straight. Okay. Okay, and then I'll get these all really even, which is important. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna square it up to there. Make sure that it'll be pretty darn square. There we go. Okay, and sometimes the fabric, you know, it likes to move and do its own thing. So sometimes we have to correct it. But this is why it doesn't really matter how perfectly I cut it out the first time because I'm going to square it up. Okay. Did I think you might have mentioned this. Did you pre-wash the flannel? I did. It's really important to pre-wash the flannel. Yes. Because the flannel will shrink and our fabric does not shrink. Right, exactly. And flannel, it shrinks less than it used to. So they've gotten better over the years. Um, if you have any flannel from the 70s, that stuff will shrink by half. Um, <laughs> it's really shrinky. Um, the flannel now will shrink less, but it still does shrink. So, and I think it's just because of how it's actually made that it's a more shrinky fabric. But go ahead and pre-wash that. And that's why it kind of looks a little, I don't know, kind of webby. I don't know if you can see, if you get close to it. It looks a little different after, after it's washed, but it's shrunk down. It looks a little more like wool is actually what it, what it looks like or like felting. 
So I actually wash it on hot and dry it on hot. So I want it to get out any shrink that it's possibly going to do. This isn't necessarily a project that's going to get a lot of washing, but it's nice that you can wash it. So at the end, we can actually, you know, yeah, wash and dry this thing. Okay, so we're going to do two things before we sew the two pages together. We're going to put our um, stay stitching for where we're going to leave a turning gap, and we're going to put our handles in. So what I want to do, though, is I want to mark them first and do that stay stitching. Okay. And I'm just going to leave a little turning gap. I'm just going to pick three inches on my... On my... Um, or on my, yeah, on my board here. All right. I'm going to come back over. I'm like, okay, so this mark and this mark. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's go sew this one, and then we can put this aside. So I'm just doing my stage stitching line, and that's going to come back later, and I'm going to use it. All right. So I'm going to do that at a half inch seam allowance. Is it at a 3.5? Can't see it. Yep, 3.5 stitch Great length. Stitch. 3.5. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch it right along here at my seam allowance. Oops, I missed up. What happened? We changed the we changed where it was. Oh, we have to reshift. Yep, we'll put it back. Zero. Try again. So it's like an eighth of an inch shot. So that was just, a, I know you, you're you calling this a stay stitching line. And we've talked about this before, but let's go over it for some folks that maybe haven't seen this before. So what this is, is just a little line. I'm going to hide the part that's not right. But this part is just a line that's on my seam allowance that when I come back and use this later, it's going to give a nice little turning part. And I'll be able to um, hand stitch across here really easily. Okay, so we're going to do this on both of them. Before I move this, because I didn't stay stitch or because I didn't spray baste it, I'm going to pin it in a few places. If you spray baste it, you won't have to pin it. So, you know, perks one way or the other. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just pin kind of my corners and then some sides here. Now I'm going to take this over and I'm going to do the same thing. And so right here with a half inch seam allowance. And again, I'm not back stitching or anything. I'm not stitching anything together. I'm really just giving myself a guide for later. All right, I'm taking okay. a minute to shout out my cousin Jennifer. I just saw she popped on. Nice. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Okay. So now we're going to put this back where we had it, all laid out. And I'm going to put my the the other side of the cover. So remember, this was the outside of the cover. This was the inside cover. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these right sides together. One of the things that I will recommend that you do is that you do a double check and make sure that this is facing the right direction. Okay, so make sure that these are both <laughs> right side up. It's really easy to put it wrong side, and especially if you don't look again. So you just lay this down. It's really easy, and you don't have any idea that you did it wrong until you've sewn it together, and then you're like, wait, that didn't work. Okay, so I always try to do a little double check, make sure that it's facing the right way. This is one of those, ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we're just going to lay these together, and I'm going to repin and use the pins that I have here and more pins. I'm going to do the, the corners first. So I like to do a little kind of a 45 degree in from the corner because it keeps the corner really stable. The fabric isn't going to move around on me. So I will always try to pin the corners first and then I'll pin the rest of it. Okay, so there we go. One more, and that helps keep things where I want them to be. Now, because we're using something in here to stabilize it, I don't have to pin as much as I sometimes do. So if we're sewing two layers of just the regular cuddle together, I'm definitely gonna want to take my time and double pin all the way around. When I'm using something like the flannel underneath or the batting, it actually is a lot more stable and I can pin less. So I still try to pin this direction because it helps me know that this is where I'm stopping and starting, but I won't double pin like I normally do. So if I were doing this with um, 
just the two layers of cuddle, this is how I would do it, is I would pin along this edge often. And then I would come back in here and do this double row of pins. Okay, and what this does is really holds the fabric really nice and stable. So if you're new to sewing cuddle or if this tends to start moving on you, just stop and double pin. Like that is the easiest way to keep it from not going anywhere is just to double pin. So when we double pin, the, since we're introducing this again, um, mm -hmm. the idea is that when you sew, you take out the first row, but you leave the second row of pins in place. Correct. While you're sewing. Correct. And make sure that that second row of pins is outside of your foot. Yes. Or inside of your foot, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. It should be, it should be that the, the head isn't within the half an inch because your half an inch should be just about here. And then you're just going to stitch right along here. And these heads should get missed. If you have to move them, I sometimes have to, you move them and it's fine. Okay. But that holds it really nice and stable because I've got the other fabric on here. This isn't going to move as much, but sometimes because the bottom one is more stable, because it has the flannel directly on it. And this one does not, this one might tend to shove a little bit. And if it does, just go back to double pinning. Okay. Okay. So it's spray basting the batting on here. It makes a big difference. You still need to pin a little bit. Don't try to get too brave and not pin at all because it will still move on you. I noticed that you put the heads of the pins all the same direction. Yep. Sort of counterclockwise around. Yep. And that's so as I sew, they're gonna, I'm gonna get to the point first and I'll take those out. So absolutely, I try to pin them uh, very specifically. So now I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put my needle down right where I did my stay stitching before. Okay. Hey Jana, you can absolutely rewatch this on Facebook and YouTube, especially YouTube is a great place to go yeah. back and watch this live. It'll be, it'll Recorded. be up yeah. where we record every episode. <laughs> you can find the whole playlist, no problem. Yep. Okay, so I've got it placed down in my seam allowance that I already stitched. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just pivot this and sew off the edge. So this is what we call um, an L pivot in a lot of our patterns. And I try to count my stitches and go back that many. And then I'll do a little flip. It looks like, oops, sorry. I went one too far. So I try to put those back so it'll be nice and even. So basically I stitch to the edge, I stitch back, and then I'm going to stitch this way. And that's going to create that L pivot. So I'm pivoting at the, the crux of the L, and that will make a stronger turning hole for me. So you'll notice if you use many of our patterns at all, we do this in a lot of the patterns. Anytime there's a turning hole, yep. that reinforces the corner. It really does. And so I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to stop about a half an inch from the corner. And then I back stitch. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to see, okay, I could go one more stitch. I'm going to do that. And I'll pivot again. Yep, that's right. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go backward just a little bit. I don't want to go too far past the corner because I am going to trim these corners. But I'm just going to reinforce those because I'm going to shove them out real hard when I turn this book. We want to make sure that they stay nice and strong and I don't pop the uh, point turner out the end. I'm going to do the same thing, the back stitch. Check this. Nailed it that time. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. And as I come around here, I'm just going to try to keep this nice and straight. If I'm having any issues, I can always bring in my stiletto, which I love. Hold these things nice and tight where they need to be. A lot of times I find I just kind of have to reshift things just a little bit every once in a while. Can we... Can we take a minute and talk about the stiletto? Sure, the please, stiletto I like please. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so the stiletto, this is the by Annie stiletto. It's her um, precision stiletto and pressing tool is what it's called. And what I really like about this, it has a nice strong point, nice sharp point here. And this is actually sandblasted. So it holds a lot better. So there's no slipping. It actually has a little grip to it where a lot of them just slide. So I use it for lots of things and where I want to keep it so that it's going the right direction. I can just kind of guide the fabric with this. And I like that I can get it to the corners really well. So I don't use it a ton around this edge. I usually just kind of like reposition things and then go. But we will use it when we actually do the, the top stitching. And it comes in very handy. 
So again, you're going to do these same steps with all the pieces. The cover is the larger one. The inside pieces are a little smaller, but it's the same. Same. Oh, you know what? We didn't do the handle. It's the same step, except for the handle is what I was going to say. And that, I was like, the handle. That is an oopsie. That's an oopsie. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Okay. okay. You're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff real quick. I got distracted by the pinning. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pretend this isn't sewn together. We just have this part. So we just start off the season. Bam, let's do it. All right, let's fix things. All right, so I'm gonna find the middle is what I'm doing there. Okay, so I folded it in half, found the middle. And this is what I'm actually gonna use my board. So I don't use my board very often to measure with, but every once in a while these sort of things come in handy. So I wanna measure one inch from either side of the center. And then I'm gonna put it so that my, um, the fold is on the outside and the two seams coming together is on the inside. So you remember how we folded it and it came like this. Mm -hmm. So this part is the one that I want on the inside part here. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to position this an inch away. It's about an inch wide, which is great. Okay. And I'm just going to pin it twice. So the reason I do this is because I'm going to show you if I pin this over here and I just pin once. Come on little guy. It has a lot more wiggle. So it can wiggle around here a lot more than this one. Okay, so this one will get crooked. And what happens is it gets sewn on like this. And then it's like weird. So we want to keep it straight. So I always do two pins. I'll do the same thing here. So this one is like kind of tucked in still is I'll go in here and pull, pull it out. Oh, there it is. Okay. That works pretty nicely, right? Okay, so now we have two things that we can do here. I don't know that I have, I'll have to look and see if I have a needle. Um, we can sew this shut, and I like to do it, I like to hand sew it shut, but I forgot to grab a normal hand sewing needle. <laughs> We're going to come over here and dig with you. Okay, trying. Looks like I just have a sewing needle sewing machine needle, safety pin. Okay. All right. So we're going to use this one, which isn't as great. I will tell you, um, it's sewing this shut. I actually really like, um, quilting needles for sewing these shut because it's re they're really sharp and thin and just like psh, psh, through. That'll be a fun one to caption, huh? huh? <laughs> I, I go back through and edit the closed captions after the show. It takes me a couple of days usually before I get to that. But uh, she makes the funniest noises with uh, with her mouth, and I have to figure out how to spell them. <laughs> and it's it's, it's a highlight funny. of my week. <laughs> it's funny. Now I think about it when I make these little noises, I'm like, oh, sorry, it shows up on captions. Okay, so I just knit, uh, knotted a big piece of thread with my hand sewing needle here, and I'm going to go in underneath here. I'm going to start on the side that has the flannel because it's um, going to be denser there and hold my knot really nicely. Sometimes with the cuddle, because it's a knit, it'll want to come through. Ooh, my camera is trying so hard to focus on everything all at once. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to try. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little stitch on the outside of that stitching line that we sewed before. So you, if you remember way back at, the, back at the beginning, we did the stay stitching line and I'm going to stitch on either side of those. So on the like the basically the more front part. This needle does not want to sew as nicely as I want it to. We're just gonna kind of go back and forth. So when I need a I need a thimble to shove it. You almost never need a thimble in your life, but this needle seems a little bit we're going to call it stronger. It's stronger. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a thicker one, right. which is good for certain things like doing some of the um, stitching. When we were trying to get through all the layers, it'll get through the layers a little bit better because it's stronger and it didn't bend. Um, so it's interesting because we've talked about this before. Like one of the things that I think is 
fascinating about all of the tools that are made for sewing. I used to really think that it was all kind of a scam. And now I realize that there are tools that work better for certain things and they make it easier because of those tools. And so like this needle isn't necessarily perfect for this job, but I do have a needle I used yesterday that's in the other studio that worked very well for it. So, um, and like I said, it was a quilting needle. So it's a really thin, short needle and they work really nicely for this. So I'm just gonna kinda back and forth, back and forth here. Um, this is one, unlike the stuffed animals, when we do these same sort of ladder stitch shut, it's not gonna get nearly as much wear as um, those, because this isn't gonna be actually a stress point. We are just trying to close this hole. Right, we're not stuffing this with polyfill and then smacking our brother over the head with it? No, nope. no, that's okay. not what you're gonna do. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> brother's like wait what's happening okay so i'm just going to stitch back and forth this whole thing <laughs> you see i've used the table as my thimble i will so, pull this nice and tight while we're here mm -hmm. laureen is allergic to hand sewing yes some people are <laughs> um so i will say linda is too and um sometimes we work around that no no i got a neat a knot there we go uh, so I'm going to show you one of the things that I did on one of the other samples so that if you really, really hate hand stitching, I like it when it works right. This one isn't working quite as nicely as I like it to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this in here. So I did a little knot and then I'm going to shove it down the side just a little and pull it out over here. Okay. So now hand stitched clothes and now I can go ahead and top stitch it you can top stitch it without putting it closed um, without stitching it closed and I will I have to go around the other side of the table sorry so on this one here let me see if I can find the spots I did it it's pretty hard to tell so right there can you see where it gets a little weird right there? Yeah, it's a little that's, softer. That's the part that I didn't hand stitch close. I just turned it in, this part here too. I just turned it in and then kept it closed with the top stitching. It got caught in the top stitching. It got caught in the top stitching. there's so a half see, an inch of seam allowance there and you're only using half of it. So see, I can I can open that up there. Oh, sure. All right. Oh, so, sure. so that totally works. So if you are allergic to hand stitching, you don't have to with this project. You actually can. And I don't suggest, so sometimes we say you could just zigzag the edge. This one, I would say, just leave it. Like, it's totally fine. If you look at this book, you would never, you'll never see that unless you're really looking for like, where's the weird spot? Okay. So no big deal. It, it, if somebody in your life is critical enough to find that, that's probably the last time they get a soft look. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wonder clip these edges. What I have found is that they don't move so much. They don't shift so much this way. So a lot of times when we're sewing cuddle, it kind of wants to stretch this way and grow. And I found it didn't want to do that, but it was hard to keep those edges um, even. So they want to do this, where you end up with the line, with the seam line on the back or the front. We don't want that. We want to keep it nice and even over here. So we could do a little pinning if we want to, but really the wonder clips seem to work just fine for me. So we're gonna do that today. Um, if you are, uh, I was gonna say allergic to wonder clips, we have a problem, but this is gonna be, the, you could just pin it. But the wonder clips, and it's funny cause I don't use wonder clips that often um, cause I tend to be like, well, I like pinning better. Okay, so I like to start somewhere in the middle. I'm actually going to start not up here. I'm going to start around here. So you noticed in the middle, they're all are in on the other sample. All the turning holes are around here. And that tends to be where I do turning holes is either in the center or on the back. And this is where I'll start my seam too. Just in case it gets ugly where it comes back together, I want to make that in a place that isn't as visible. And I'm going to do this with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and put the foot down. Sorry. And now I'm going to bump my stitch up to a 4.0. I can't see it. So I can't tell whether it's at a four or not. Is it, there we go. 4.0. Yep. Okay. 4.0. We're at zero. Hasn't shifted anywhere. We're good to go. All right. So now let me make sure I've got my stiletto because I'm going to need it at this point. There it is. 
All right. So now I'm going to go and I'm just going to start. I'm not going to backstitch because we're going to come over this. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that this is guiding really nicely where I want it to go. This is the part that becomes um, different if you are sewing it with different layers. So this is the first part that we'll start to notice a difference because on this we're sewing through two layers of cuddle plus the seam allowance. So four layers of cuddle and two layers of flannel. All right, so if I had added batting to this, if I trim out the seam allowance, I'm still gonna have two layers of batting and four layers of cuddle. So you end up starting to have like more and more layers. So just be aware that if your machine doesn't have a lot of oomph, it's gonna have a harder time getting through the lots of layers. All right, so now I've stopped it about a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pivot. And this is where the stiletto comes in really handy. Because what I notice is that this tends to be a hard spot for it to get going because there's a lot of thickness here and it doesn't want to catch and get moving. So what I do is I stick my stiletto in just the edge of it. I mean, just the edge of it to grab it. And as I start to sew, I'm going to push my stiletto and get it to start moving. Okay. So this part here, I'm going to pull my handle out and stitch over that to make sure that that's nice and flat. I see your left hand going into the back. What's the le what's the, your left hand doing back there? It's just trying to make sure that it stays straight. Okay. And moves you're not really pulling on it. I'm not really there. pulling, but you see, like it wants to do this when it's sewing. So I'm always trying to straighten it. Okay. So I can't tell you exactly why, but I, <laughs> in the dynamics of things, it like always wants to kind of push over to one side. So I'm just trying to keep it flat. So again, we're gonna get to the corner, about a quarter of an inch. Check it, yep, that seems pretty good. So now, again, I'm at a long edge and these are the ones that get a little weird. So I'm gonna, and it's really because it's trying to, I don't know, pull down hard on two different directions. So I'm just bending this at the seam and doing some clips, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick my stiletto in here so you need to be really careful because you are sticking it close to the needle so don't shove it in because you will hit it okay so you're just trying to catch the very edge of the fabric and just start it moving along all right if there's any questions on that let me know but it does help a lot because i know that's something that will sometimes frustrate me when i'm trying to trying to sew and it just won't grab and it just sticks there that stiletto will help a lot to kind of get it to to get a move on and once it catches it's fine it'll keep going just great different walking feet have different behaviors right yes. there right yes. so sometimes it's trying to suck the fabric down into the feed dogs yes a little bit so sometimes leaders and enders they but, would work at a start but at this but point not with this because you're you already can't. a quarter of an inch in right right so you just have to grab it and kind of pull it and it really does it really you can totally like i have so much power with that little bitty bit. I mean, you can't really see how much is going in, but it is just the tiniest bit of it. But all of a sudden I have all sorts of control on my fabric. So that is really one of the reasons that I love the stiletto is because it just gives me control. There's no other way that I can manipulate that corner. So once I get up here, this is all the way under here with a quarter of an inch, I can't do anything. And I'm definitely not putting my fingers under there and then hitting the go pedal like, <laughs> Got it. that's not happening so i have to have a way that i can oh dang it i missed that um that i can come in there and get it to move so that's what it is is i just get it to just grab just enough of the fabric that i have some oomph and right up here in that corner there's a lot of layers so it's actually there's quite a bit to grab onto in there get this to pull out smash that flat so that holds that handle in again even more it's not going anywhere okay and again doing a little flip so once you figure this out with this uh, stiletto trick here it actually is super fast and easy okay take my pin and my wonder clip out and now I'm aiming for this spot back here again so I want to Make sure that as I get closer, back here, as I get closer, that I'm going to start to really aim for that. 
Okay, so now I can see it and I can kind of see where it's going to, where my needle is going to hit. So I'm really just aiming for that guy. And as I get closer, I can kind of manipulate it a little bit, take it nice and slow, get it to cross that. Take a couple stitches after it, and then I'm going to do a lock stitch and clip it. And that way, it just lines up really nicely, and you can't see where I started and stopped, except for there's a little thread. That's that's a pretty spectacular joint. It's nice. Pretty good. Yeah. And it really is just about just aim for it. Okay. So now we've got our front all put together. We've got the top stitching. We've got a little handle. Okay. Ta-da. So now let's pull out the other ones. So I've got some other samples here. Whoa. Sorry to show you. Um. So I was like, wait a second, what is happening with this one? Okay, so this is the other B is for Bear book that I did. And this one, I did the two layers of batting. And one of the other things that I did is I did a little bit of, uh, I don't know, not handwork, not to scare you guys, a little extra work. Embellishing. Embellishing um, before I got started. So I took and stitched around so I put ba um, batting on the back of it so this is the the polyester the thin batting okay and I just stitched around the shapes all right so just stitched around them and I think it's really cute okay so this is the one this one I just stitched around it this one I put a layer of cotton batting a higher loft cotton batting. You can see it's thicker than the polyester, about twice as thick. I put that behind it. I stitched it down once I trimmed it out, which looks like this except opposite. So this, I, the other one, I stitched this down first, trimmed it like this, and then put the poly batting over it. This one, I did the poly batting first and then the cotton and stitched it. What it does is it's kind of like a faux trapunto. So what I think is interesting though, is like, cause it's quite a bit of extra work to do it. And what I realized is that it didn't actually make a big difference in what the finish look is. I do feel like this whale or the narwhal pops a little bit more than the monkey does. I think the stitching line shows up, but it's interesting that it's not really forcing the, the stuffing towards you. Right. It really going that way. Right. So on cotton, it'll look more like this. You see more like, so it's it, Trapunto is a, um, a form of quilting and it's stuffed is what it is. So this is faux Trapunto. Um, and in quilting, it does this more on the front, but I noticed with the cuddle, it doesn't do it quite as much as I want to. You can feel it. So if I like texturally, it has, it has a little more oomph to it than this does. Oh yeah. So you can you can feel yeah. looking for the feel of it. That's that's a difference. And I did stitch all around these so that there's you see that? Yeah, you can see like the little extra stitching. Okay. And then on this side I did the same thing, but I did a little stitching in their eyeballs. And then their eyes show up a little bit more. And that was kind of cute. It's a little dragon. Okay, so you could definitely do some more of this. The jelly bean, I was like, oh, it'd be really cute if you had some like ribbon. And you could stitch it down here and make the little ribbons come off of it. There's some fun things that you could do. I say feel free and um, try to do something fun with it. So I did try a couple of a couple of things. Okay. So what I wanted to do was, what are we looking at time-wise? Okay. So what you would do here is you would trim this one and then sew this together. Okay. We're just going to lay these together. So we can start to see, I'm going to trim this real quick here, just so we can see the edge and how thick this is. Okay, so we're going to lay these together, lay these together, and lay this in the middle. And as we do that, you can see how much thickness we have here. Whoa. This is what we're trying to sew together in the end. Okay. So this is, this is where you need to kind of think about how much can your machine handle? Cause it's one thing that is going to sew all of those other, other edges and the top stitching, but then it has to sew this, this hunk. 
Okay. This I will say my machine can do, but it's very nice and slow. <laughs> very nice and slow. This one had one layer of batting. This is how thick that ends up being. Okay. So a little bit less. So we're going to put it together. We're going to put together this one over here. So we have the, I brought the two other um, pieces that we have, the other soft books that we have. People so this, have been really wanting to see these other two. Okay, so, so we've got that's, two can we talk about them? <laughs> yeah, so that's okay, what we're So we've got two <laughs> other ones. Um, would you, oh, I can grab it. Pardon me. Okay, so this one is the Critter Count. And this one, oh, I can't remember. Maybe Adriana can put up the kit. So this one comes as a panel. It also comes with the kit that makes a blanket. Okay, so you can get this. This one was done, I remember right, this one is with the flannel inside. Yes, okay. So this one is with flannel. And the way that you're gonna put them together is you're just gonna lay them. So this is with all of them, okay? You're gonna lay them together in the order they go. So I can lay these together any way I feel like it. And as I start to look through, I realize like this doesn't actually work. So this is what I'm gonna suggest you do is you actually lay them out and figure out which way do they go together. Like, okay, so I want one, two, okay, and then I need three, and then four is going to go here. So I'm going to find my four, and it's going to be folded in half. So here's my four, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I can make sure that it's right. The same way it's going to work with your B is for bear. It's going to be the whole alphabet. It goes correct. Make sure that it's that before you sew it together. Okay. The uh, on the farm one doesn't really have. It has page numbers, but it doesn't really matter because one doesn't flow to from the other one. They really are just different animals. All right. This one I will tell you. The only thing that is different about this is that these tops are supposed to match. Oh, that's interesting. Right here in the binding. The of center. The, the center of the You've got to match those well when you sew them. So I didn't yesterday and had to take stuff out. So once they match up fine, it looks great. But otherwise, like you're going to sew this all together so that they match. This is okay? a good time to talk just a little bit about Shannon Fabrics only sells wholesale. Correct. So where do you find this? You're going to have to find a local quilt shop. You're going to have to find a local quilt shop. I do know that Feather Your Nest, I talked to her yesterday, and she has the bear panel and the coordinated fabric. So if we can put her stuff up there or if she's around this time, um, it's Feather Your Nest. And she's in South Carolina, I believe. Um, she has them both in stock. Probably Cali Quilt Co. has it in stock, too. Like, those, there's some big ones. Um, and then these are to order. You can to order, order. You can order it and shipped. have it shipped. Yep. So otherwise, you're just going to have to... Um, yeah, check out your local quote shop, okay? And that's where we want you to shop is, you know, the local guys. Okay, so this, I'm going to measure this. This is 22 inches across, almost perfectly. I'm very impressed with it. I'm going to slide this down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin in at 11 inches. And I'm going to put another pin in. Oh, yeah. Adriana inches. just put the store locator in too, which great. is a great, a great tool on our website. You put your zip code in and it's going to tell you the shops in your area. It'll tell sell, you some of the shops, some of the shops that, that sell our fabric. Okay. So now I figured out where the center of it is. All right. And like I said, this is going to work exactly the same with all of them. This is just the one that I have <laughs> put together right now. Okay. So we're going to put the next piece on. Because I know which way these orders, they went just like this. This, I just took them off. Okay, so this is gonna be the next one. This is gonna be the same way and I'm gonna find the center. And I'm gonna put it in the fold here. And I'm gonna put it in the fold down here. And I will tell you, because this is a lot of thickness, it's gonna to wanna to move on you. So don't expect that you could pin one side and it would be enough. You really have to pin both sides of the fold. Then I'm going to line those up here with the ones I did before. Okay, so it's centered. I'm going to flip it open. All right. 
Is this making sense? So far, so good. So visually, I'm just going to guesstimate that this is about three quarters of an inch or something. These look the same to me. This doesn't matter. This difference here doesn't matter so much because you're going to lay the other one right on top of it. But this distance definitely matters. Okay. So now, because I have them here and they are where I want them to be, I'm going to pin them. Okay. So those seem like very heavy duty flower head pins. Uh, they that are. A lot. So they will go through more even. So I'm going to get my heavy, heavy duty ones out. So this is the one that I kind of fought with over there. This is the medium weight ones and these are a little bendy. So it was trying to bend under there. These are the heavyweight ones and they don't bend. Okay, so we're gonna use these now. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, fold it in half, pin it, fold it in half, pin it, and line these up yet again. Okay, and if I keep those pins in there, I can see a lot better. This should match the one below it matches pretty good and really at this point I'm trying to match these two layers more than I'm trying to match this so this is off just slightly if I move this off my corners are not going to match I want the corners to match more than I not care about the pins the pins okay. are perfectly accurate okay but now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin again and I'm not necessarily pinning through all the layers oh I did okay but if you're only pinning through part of it it's fine because you've pinned this layer to this layer, and now you can pin this layer to this layer. Okay, Got kind it. of stack it. But we want them to stay where they're gonna be. And now you need to sew it. So now we need to sew this, this center seam. I need to mark where the center seam is gonna be, and then we have to sew it. This is where that little hump jumper comes in. So let me see if I can measure how big this is. So it's about 19 inches. So that's gonna be 18, 19 and 19 no, inches no. is nine and a half. I'm going to say eight and a half, but then I was like, I think that's wrong. Okay, look at that. It lines up. All right, so now I'm going to take my stiletto. Oh, that's a nice trick. And I'm going to draw a little line there. It just ruffles up the nap of the fabric. So I just draw it from basically from bottom to top, and that pushes the nap up that direction, so I have something to see that I want to sew. So then all these pins can come out because all of these pins I can't sew over. I want to make sure I don't. So when I first did this, I really struggled with trying to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And um, I couldn't sew it very well. So I found a tool, one tool that works pretty darn well with it. And um, that would be a hump jumper. So you may have heard of a hump jumper before. Um, or you may have that sort of thing in your... Um, in your toolbox. So this is a hump jumper, which is, this is the brand name Gina Majig. So a hump jumper or a height compensation tool is what they are called. This one, the brand is, like I said, is a Gina Majig. This one is called a big jig and it's basically the same thing. Um, you can see it has, God, I should take it out. I got this on clearance somewhere just for this project. I can show you guys. Okay, so this, it has like a big height thing here. All right, so the same as this, these are different. You can see this is a little bit thicker than this one. I don't know if you, yeah, you can tell. Okay, so the clear one is a little thicker than the red one. And then a lot of machines come with these height compensation tools that you can use singularly doubled up or tripled up for a thicker space, okay? So this will, this is, they call them a height compensation tool or a hump jumper because it will get over this hump. So this is really the issue is that when we start sewing here, we'll put it, let's put it under the machine and we'll see what happens. I'll show you. Thank you. Okay, so this is where really you have so much thickness that it gets really weird. So come in from the side hawk so you can see what's happening with the foot. This is where we have the issue. Okay, so you see how the foot is basically totally... It's like going skiing uphill. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is it not going to work very well? This is how needles break because your foot is trying to do things and it can't quite grab things right. The 
feed dogs don't work the way that they're supposed to. This is all cockeyed. And so it doesn't work as well. So what we can use is one of these little hump jumper things. And we put this behind it. Okay. Then it makes it lots more flat. All right. So let's see if the, where's the other clear one? Do you see it? There it is. So let me pick that up. And it's funny because I can lift the foot, but it doesn't really move because it's so high. It's almost, it's already up. <laughs> it's already up as high as it can go. So at this point, my foot is much higher and it can go straight down. The needle is going to go straight down and work just fine. Okay. So all we need this for is the very beginning when we're going to stitch it just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do a lock stitch. And then I'm going to sew forward. I'm going to see if we can get this thing to, to go. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my stiletto because I don't like using my hands to get this to move because I need to keep this as flat as possible as it comes under the foot just because there's so much thickness. Okay. So this is one that taking your time to sew it slowly will help a lot. There go all my hump jumpers. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to come around and do the over the shoulder thing again. Okay. And I'm just following that line that I kind of scritched in the, in the fabric. Let's get the Teresa's eye view. Okay. So you can see here's the line still. And I'm just following that line. I'm going to try to squish this down as I get up here. You take it nice and slow, and then I do the locks. So I haven't, I don't go over it because this is so much more thickness in the seam allowance that almost every time I break a needle. Let me just lock it one more time. Make sure it's nice and secure. Okay, you could go over this twice. I've seen a couple people do that and it looks really nice if you can get them even. I can't ever get them perfectly even. So you can see that the line isn't perfectly straight. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Great question, okay? Linda. Yes, we. she was still using a four. Mm -hmm. Straight stitch. You definitely want a bigger, a bigger stitch. A this. bigger stitch. All right, so now it's all stitched all the way through. That's what it looks like here. So now I can go ahead and I can take my pins out on my couple layers. All right, and here we've got a book. All right, so that's how these books are put together. So it, you can see that this is this is this thickness. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're just gonna go till the 30 after. I'm gonna put this one together so you can see the difference in how this one works. Um, these ones you can see I did not do the handles with them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can measure on my board how big this one is. Okay. So my center is there. And I can lay these out for my centers to match. And like I said, these don't matter which order they go in because they're just a farm. It does tell you which pages they are, <laughs> but I, I didn't really feel care. Like that one should have a, okay. It should have a what? I think the last page has a bunch of like these little ones on it, but maybe I'm wrong. No, just that one does. These all have just okay. their distinct animal. Okay. So I think that that looks, that looks good together. Yes. Okay. So this is the one that like I cut it out and just sewed them together and I really don't have any idea which way it was supposed to go. There are numbers on the on the pattern. Okay, but this one I can line up exactly how it is according to this um, with the uh, the dots. Okay, that center thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin through all these layers. Much easier to pin through all of those because there's nothing in behind this. Okay, so this is only cuddle. All right, so let's see how this one sews. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put the hump jumper. Yeah, actually, if you, yeah, can you see how much, how this is, see how that's not, not quite as bad as the other one? <laughs> so I'm gonna stick this behind here, get it started. 
So I didn't do a I didn't do a straight line here down the middle. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and see what happens, guys. You got the polka dots. I got the polka dots. I got lines on it to like guide me by. So that's helpful. Okay. And we're just gonna make our way down here all the way. This one is much, much easier to sew. So I will say the first one that I ever did was with two layers of batting. And then I was like, oh, never again. That was a lot. It's just really, it's difficult for the machine to sew through. And um, I find that the one layer of batting or the flannel are really my favorite. The flannel is my absolute favorite. This one is much easier with nothing in between, but it is super floppy. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Crinkle. Crinkle. So we're going to show you that really quick. I just realized like, wait, none of these I put crinkle in. Okay. So as a mom, I never <laughs> liked the crinkly toys, but a lot of babies love them. So I'm going to show you that one. So yeah, we can show this really quick with the one that I didn't finish. Just move all these things around here. I'm going to put all the books over there. All right. Pile <laughs> <laughs> of books. Does anybody's sewing room look like this sometimes? Okay. So we're you gonna know, except for all that stuff. <laughs> yes, that part. <laughs> we try not to show people. <laughs> except the hawk likes to. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim this. And we're just gonna trim this off. So this is one of those things that I forgot. I was gonna talk about this when we were talking about the like embellishing, so adding the extra stuffing or the batting behind it you know you could do some extra stitches you can do some little embroidery stuff you could do whatever you wanted to it one of the other things that you can do is add like a crinkle material to it so this one is from the gypsy quilter and it is uh cut crackle and sew sensory material so you can use this in lots of different things and it will make it crinkle so let's let's check it out so um this, like I said, this is from the Gypsy Quilter, and I have not used this one before, so I'm kind of excited to see what this does. You will often be surprised at how noisy it actually can be. So, <laughs> As intended. As intended. Also, one of the things I learned from doing the first book is that I covered the entire page with it. I would suggest that you don't do that. One page, the whole page of it was so loud, it was just insane. It wasn't a choice. It was always your the book was always going to be noisy. It was going to be noisy <laughs> if you looked at it. It was just a little bit crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut off a bunch because it's just easiest for right now. I'm just going to cut off a hunk. So it was three inches wide is what I did, and then I want to make this. So it is the length of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim that. Okay. Now I'm going to baste it in before I do anything. I want to sew this together just so we can see how crinkly it is. Okay. Yeah. We're still on a four. Okay. We are. It's fine. I'm just basting it in. You so can... this, I will want, it wants to do funny things because it's a totally different kind of fabric not really fabric it's plastic you can hear how noisy it is just like that you can yeah you can hear the the, the needle popping holes in it <laughs> yep exactly See what that looks like so i just basted it onto the end so it's there like i said don't necessarily do the whole thing it's just it's a lot okay so we're gonna sew part of this together so we can see how that page turns out and how it sews I feel like I should probably sew it this direction so I can see and make sure that that doesn't get um, kind of crazy. Okay. So I'm going to do it this direction. I'm going to sew it with the half inch seam allowance. We're going to pretend like we're sewing around the whole thing. Okay. We'll come Except up the where side. you just started at the, at the at the turning hole, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what I did. I started <laughs> at the turning hole. <laughs> so I'm going to try to find my stiletto again. I'm going to hold this back here because it's going to want to push okay, there we go and that was what i found before is that it definitely wants to to push a little okay. not too far 
Now I went a little not too far. Okay, get that over. So it does stick um, to it because it's plastic. So you'll want to make sure and kind of keep a hand on it to get it guiding through because it wants to stick to the bottom foot. Oh, it wants the to stick to the, the, foot. the foot? Gotcha. So it might work great on the with the feed dogs. Let's try. Let's put it the other direction and see what happens. And I can tell you guys if it was an easier or if it shoved more. That's what I'm worried is it might shove more. Well, you're not going to be cornering it this time, right? On the, the... No, no. But that's so just fine. So maybe against Got the it. feed dogs might be slightly better. So it wants to grab it a little bit more. Okay. So this would be one where we're gonna we're gonna trim. Okay, that's right. The full trim because this With is the batting. batting. So we're just gonna do this corner. And you can wash it just fine with the crinkle material, yep. right? Yep. Okay, we're just going to trim out the batting here. And really, all that does is make it so that when it turns, it's not as thick. So you don't have quite so much up in that corner. Sorry, there's always so many things I want to show you guys. We just always run out of time. But, but, so I will say one of the reasons that I don't always use the basting spray, especially with the flannel but, or with the batting too, is that um, they don't always use the basting spray on the whole thing is because it will stick on these edges. So when I'm trying to cut them out, it's a little harder. So sometimes I try to just baste in the middle of it. Okay, so again, just cutting out the extra bits here. What's happening? Just Evan? focus. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And honestly, if you're not, you know, super careful and you end up cutting some of your back fabric here in your seam allowance, it's fine. Don't don't panic. Stitches on the other hand. The stitches care. on the other hand, you should be careful and don't cut your stitches. Okay. And it might be easier to cut those two layers separately, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to cut them both because I just want to flip this and see what the crinkle is. Yeah. Like I said, though, I, I was definitely one of those parents who was like, oh, that makes noise. Put it away. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really my thing, but kids do love them. They love them. I remember my son, he got a, he got a fire truck from his grandma once and yeah, he loved it. I, on the other hand, <laughs> would need to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> like, a fire truck. Okay, so again, I, trimming I the corners. Really, I wasn't really allowed in the house much. So, <laughs> you know, if I wanted to make noise, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and flip these corners. We're going to pretend that the whole thing is sewn. That is crinkly. It's crinkly. So really, one of the things that, I, like, the, ouch, the reason I wanted to show it is because I think that I, like, probably like a lot of other people, would think I would need to use more. So when you get this package, you have a yard plus 36 by 51 inches. So it is a lot of crinkle. Um, don't fill every page because you hear. Yeah. I mean, it's. You want a choice. They noisy. want a choice. Everybody gets a choice. <laughs> it's very noisy. It's like the but one story really... at the end of this book. Right. But it's really <laughs> cool that like literally just you just grab it. That may not be good for church. Not yeah. Good. You might need a silent version. <laughs> it's a soft book like you would normally take to church, but not necessarily with the crinkle in it. Yes, absolutely. But babies love this. Babies love it. So you can stick this crinkle stuff in all sorts of things, including this. They show it with a little um, stuffed animal. And I think that would be kind of fun in like the hands and feet of different stuffed animals, mm. you know, because it would add a little a little texture. I say that because my kids are grown. Um, <laughs> and then you would go ahead and top stitch this just like we did before. Okay. okay. So same idea. Crazy. It looks like my sewing room exploded today. It did. It kind of did. So again, 
reiterate, you can go to the blog, you can download the show notes, and it will talk a little bit about all of these different things, including the crinkle, the batting, using the flannel or nothing at all, and the hump jumpers, all that stuff. And it also has links to the two other videos that we've done with the other soft books. So each of these soft books has a video of its own that I talk about various aspects of it. This one I go into more about the crinkle, and I use that a bunch in there. And I think I have a sample where I actually have the whole page crinkled still. Um, and then this one, there's one for this that shows how to do this one. And I can't remember what I talked about, especially in that. But there are um, videos that you can watch for that. So grab the show notes. Like I said, it's from shannonfabrics.com slash blog. And that's where you can get more of that information, including the links and additional info on the products that we've used. Okay. All right. So I think we have, uh, we have a winner or something we have to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see about that. Let's see if we've got one. Okay. Today's winners are Miss Tamp on YouTube, T-A-M-P Tamp, and Mary Lloyd Jaramillo okay. on Facebook. There we there go. You go. Thank you very much for watching, for sharing. Uh, we will be back next week, and we will again have a giveaway. Oh, for the people who won, please email us at info at shannonfabrics.com. Okay, email us and send us your name again, your mailing address, and your phone number. We need to have all of that information to ship you the package. A daytime phone number. Yep, and we will send you the fabric so that you can make the panel, and we'll send you the coordinating fabric so you can make a blanket. If you get the show notes, we also tell you the coordinate, some coordinating fabrics for the um, that panel. Because one of the things I love about the panel is that it really like has a million colors in it that you can coordinate with. So I gave you some as a starting point because I didn't want to choose a backing fabric for you. So you'll find your own backing fabric and make a little blanket. Okay. So thanks winners. Email us. Um, all right. And then we'll be back next week. Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah. What is that show next okay. week? So next week we are back. We have a special episode. We are getting, uh, we are being joined by Ejer from Call Ejer, who is the designer of the Morgana pattern. So hey, we Jeremy, will be. Can you pop um, up that? Can you pop up that page? So we'll be having her join us. And we're going to be talking about Cloud Cuddle and the Morgana little jacket. Just super cute. A bunch of you, if you were on I Love Cuddle, you have seen that little picture come up and been super impressed by it. It's a very cute little jacket that can be made in a crop jacket. It can be made with one ruffle. For the Cloud Cuddle. So if you have been interested in making something with Cloud Cuddle, this is a great place to start. So it's um, listed as a cover-up, but you can use it just like it as a normal kind of hoodie. Ajara, Ajara's yeah. in the comments. She great. She can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. So she's going to join us um, making it, how to use the Cloud Cuddle, all of that good stuff. And um, that should be really fun. And we're going to do two weeks of that. So we'll have two weeks of the show that is about the Morgana, just because we're going to talk a bunch about the pattern itself and about Cloud Cuddle. And then we'll do more about actually putting it together. And we'll talk through the kind of hard parts with you to work through that so that you can learn. Because really, the Cloud Cuddle is so amazing for apparel. It is so good. So I, I saw a question come by earlier about what's your favorite cuddle for robes. And I will say it's Cloud Cuddle. So, um, yeah. Cloud Cuddle is amazing. So we're going to talk about that for the next two weeks. Um, and then we'll be back again. So every Tuesday, except for the first, which is uh, the fabric preview. So make sure you join us at the same time, same station on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, you'll get to learn more about all of our fabrics and that stuff. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Go get yourself a bear panel and make yourself a little soft book and have a good time. We will see you next week. Until then, happy sewing.